And uh, I think so. We are there with the question and answer part. So we have uh, questions here. And one question that comes up from Mr. Vivek Vyas from Institute of Agribusiness Management. Sir, he's asking that please share your views on how Indian values and ethics could be spread to global education framework. How and as academicians, we can start working together on it. So your reflection on this question. I, uh, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the question. It's not a question, rather a concern. You know, the national education policy talked about the five human values which uh, the Indian tradition and the culture right from the ancient times stresses the importance for the holistic development of society. The policy made an attempt, it says, the five human values, the truth, peace, nonviolence, love and the righteous conduct. So these values are very, very important for the holistic development of an individual. So the balance of the mind is possible if the individual is highly intellectual minus the human values, you can see the consequence in a constructive way. But the highly intellectual competencies, capacities plus the human values of truth, of the peace, non-violence, love and righteous conduct can shape society in a more glorious society that's uh, not for us alone, for everyone to come and the years to come. See, the question that you pointed out is rather a concern today for education. Right, sir. Today we are talking about uh, what kind of future that we are giving to our next generation, which has become a, a very, very big question in the minds of parents, in the minds of teachers, in the minds of elders. We are cutting the trees. There is air pollution. There is a pandemic like Corona COVID. And there is uh, every shortage of resources. So if you want to control and uh, re-alter the kind of situation that you are actually entering into, then value education is the utmost importance. Friend, what you said, we can use our Indian values for the global transformation, which we did it. When Swami Vivekananda was standing in the Parliament of Religions and addressing the world, my dear brothers and sisters, friends, you understand at that point of time, what was the social conditions? But the Indian sage with the courage and the love in heart would proclaim that the whole world is the brothers and sisters, that the brotherly hood. I think what the message that I can give it to you today is we must be courageous to understand and imbibe our value systems. And uh, not only in preaching, but also in practicing, which is a very, very important. Thank you very much, sir. There's one question from Lina, Linu, who says, how should education systems change to address the learning needs of the learners? 
you know, when you talk about uh, higher education system, I presented about the dynamics that we have. Dynamics in the sense, uh, the kind of uh, what you call the diversities that we embrace in our country. The rural and urban, literate and illiterate, employed and unemployed, the poor and the rich, the haves and the have-nots, the caste, the religion, and the creed. So all these, what I call them, are the characteristics of that Akhanda Bharat, the one nation that we talked about. So we have the diversity, which is a fragrance to our country. Therefore, meeting the educational needs of everyone, irrespective of any of the diversities that we have in this country. Thank you, sir. There's one question from Dr. Pratibha Verma. She asks, she is asking, how can we move actively to engage? Is the first is clearly framed in the national education policy. Is increasing the access. So the government says by 2035, the higher education enrollment should be 50% of G, the grass enrollment ratio GR. So today we are 26% of uh, grass enrollment ratio. In another 10, 15 years, we are planning for 50%. And that really talks about the, the expansion of the institutions at all levels. So no individual is left over. No child is left over. We are looking for universalization right from the primary education towards the higher education. That is the kind of uh, the approach. That's the kind of forwarding step, the thinking and actions which are actually put into the policy. So what we need to do is to make use of the opportunities. And come out of our comfort zones. Most of the time we stick to our comfort zones and we start blaming about the systems. But what we need to do is we need to come out of the comfort zone and make use of the opportunities which are available. And the guest best, best benefit of these resources and uh, see the personal transformation. And that's what is uh, visualized in national policy. This one, thank you very much. Sir. There's one very interesting question that uh, is again from uh, Vivek Vyas from IABM. Very inquisitive. Uh, questions coming uh, that uh, kindly share your view on the challenges posed by the ICT on education and way for, forward for all of us. I know. Vyasab, a question to my expect kiyata. Right. For the last Che uh, Mayne say, Hamara Pura digital me chal raha hai. Our Yeto both Buddha Kushika bath hai. We did not stop learning. We did not lock down learning. The institutions were locked down. The physical schools were locked down. Universities were locked down. As a pre precautionary measure. But the learning was never under lockdown. And at this juncture, through this platform, I must uh, salute all the teachers and I consider them as the front line warriors. I can understand your problem. You say that uh, teaching through digital and the uh, online screen time the mental and the physical health of the learners. All these are things which uh, every educator need to keep in mind. And the moment we focus about these things more, 
probably that will not suffice the purpose. Today, the whole world is going towards the digital. The Prime Minister of India yesterday. We had a very big conference called the Rise 2020. And in which the Prime Minister of India. Talked about the artificial intelligence. And efforts are made to create artificial intelligence that can be applied to all sectors, whether it is a health, whether it is education, whether it is a transportation, whether it is a, the any sector that you are talking about. So what is required is. We need to update our knowledge and skills. And integrate our efforts with the technology. Therefore, the perfection as well as the scope as well as the profit can be maximized. I can understand that we were not prepared through teach through digital learning. When the lockdown came on March 21st. Then we were actually thinking what to do. Then we could approach technology as a ray of hope. Then with our limited knowledge, we tried our best to impart the teaching and learning. And Vyasab, aap apne ko pooch lijiye. Aapke experience March, April mein. Air aapka digital experience in October. There is a huge difference. So we are actually going in a progressive direction. We know that our teachers need to be trained. We know that we need to have a digital learning resources. We know that we need to have a sound connectivity. We know that we need to have the digital devices accessible to everyone. And with the help of the digital India movement of the government of India. I'm sure the plans are in the direction. And uh, certainly we will be achieving in the years to come. And all these things are the progressive developments. And uh, we know in the progressive development, we also have progressive challenges and that we are actually taking care. Thank you. Yeah, there's one very interesting uh, thing that has been put up by Dr. Manish Bhatnagar. Okay. He says, should spirituality or can spirituality help in development of global leadership? Your views on this. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Manish Bhatnagar, I'm not able to see you, but uh, thank you for your wonderful question. And he's a good friend of mine. And I expected this question from you. You know, the spirituality is a very, very important thing for the human sustenance. You know, somebody said. Where the science stops. The spirituality begins. Which means. You need not have explanations for everything. But that is a strong belief system. Which is accumulated over a period of time where people have experienced transformations in their life. And that comes as a local wisdom. And we need to have the courage to practice it and propagate it for the, the best benefit of the world. You know, friends, uh, what is most important now? Is not whose knowledge is. The concern is. What the knowledge really contributes to. If the knowledge is contributing for the global peace. If the knowledge is really contributing to the world order. I think any spiritual. Principles. Can be better utilized to create that system. And Dr. <laughs> Manishi. As a education for sustainable development, ki baat ho rahe 
and by 2030 that every nation has to complete the 17 goals and if you see the recent report where do we stand there are a lot of differences among the countries you know the esd goal goal number 16 i request all of you to go and refer esd goal 1616 it talks about the peace justice and the strong institution So the nations across the world are striving to. And uh, our religious, our spiritual knowledge, our thinking, our practice, our beliefs. Need to establish peace in our society, justice in our society and a strong institutional mechanisms. And uh, that's very, very possible if we religiously practice our spiritual values, not only preaching, but the practice in our real life. That makes the difference. Thank you for your question. Yeah, there's one more question coming from uh, Lena. Are today's teachers, educators ready to create the leaders we need tomorrow? Uh, this is the question uh, which is a uh, very, very important now. You know, a good leader is the one who creates the second cadre of leadership. Which means. He is not creating the followers, but he is creating the leaders themselves. Therefore, the new breed of teachers which are uh, uh, actually working in schools, which are actually going to experience NAP 2020 need to keep this mind keep this point in mind that i am not going to prepare what you call as a generative is a, is a adoptive learners i am not focusing about the adoptive learners but i want my learners to be generative in nature friends there is a huge difference between adoptive learner and generative learner. Adoptive learner is the one who adopts the knowledge that is accessible to. In other words, you call it as reading, writing, remembering, recalling, which are uh, the lower cognitive levels of uh, thinking. But in the generative learning process, you are talking about the creativity, the innovator, entrepreneurship, so the creative, innovative and entrepreneurship requires a new breed of qualities. So if we as educators in schools and universities to understand this, to understand that what is the future is going to be and am I preparing a competent, confident individuals to face the future, then automatically you turn out to be a developer, a creator of a new leader for new century. And that's very, very important. Thank you, sir. And I think so with enough deliberations and with much uh, insight on the national education policy, still we have one question as to how do we ensure that the education systems are more inclusive and equitable. A question from Lina. OK. Uh, see the inclusive and the equitable. Is a, a value in itself. When you call it as education system need to be transparent. Education for all. And no child left behind. And every child is in school and every child is learning. If these are certain notions. And to make these notions into practice. We cannot go away with inclusiveness. We cannot go away with equity. Therefore, the more access 
to educational opportunities. And the more transparency in administration. And the more practicing of human values. You know, today, one of the biggest problem in most of the underdeveloped countries in the world is the corruption. And the education for sustainable goal really talked about it. You know, the report, uh, UNESCO report, talks about the eight pillars of peace. Very interesting report. I can share the report to the organizers. The eight pillars of the peace. If I have one minute time. I would like to share with you. The first pillar is well functionality of the government. It is important. The good governance. And the second one is. Uh, sound business environment, ethical business environment. Most of the time we, we consider how business can be ethical. Over a period of time, we have actually. Use the word business into unethical. But friends, sir, ethical business environment is one of the pillars of the peace. And the equitable distribution of resources is the third pillar. And the fourth pillar is acceptance of rights of others. We only talk about our rights. We also need to accept the rights of others. And uh, good relation with your neighbor. Your colleagues, colleagueship. And good relationship. And uh, free flow of information. There is no information blockage. Free access to information. And uh, high quality education and the low level of corruption. UNESCO has recommended these eight pillars for peace in societies. And these pillars were translated into 17 education for sustainable development goals. And one of the very important sustainable development goals, goal number 16, is a uh, peace, justice, and a strong institution. So the point you are talking about inclusion and equitable distribution of resources. Is a indicator of strong institution and good governance. And uh, in a country like India with a lot of diversity. These values are very, very important to. Progress in a holistic way and how we practice it is again in our hands and how sincerely, committedly, confidently we practice in our approaches. I think that makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your reflection on that aspect. There is one uh, joining in this webinar, Pratibha Verma. Dr. Pratibha Verma, ma'am, she is working on complete intelligence quotient and she she is asking that how can we move actively to engage the schools, colleges and universities to incorporate programs on this complete intelligence quotient to make them excel in both academics and the corporate world. OK, good. Uh, uh, you know. Now. What is happening in universities? I must feel proud to say cutting across the country, cutting across the world. We have started thinking. More advancedly. Go away with the traditional way of thinking. And transacting with the students in a very restricted environment. Therefore, we are focusing about uh, multiple intelligences. We are focusing about uh, multimedia approaches. We are talking about multidisciplinary approaches. 
you know multilingual multilinguistic multimodal multimedia multiple intelligences i think what is required is how a single teacher can implement an effective program with a small group of students and disseminate that as a success story and that will have a ripple effect in the systems so we need, we need not do a kind of a, a, a national programs covering all the universities and all the colleges in the country but uh, we can start a humble beginning in our own classrooms where we work and experience the success and disseminate the success stories and those success stories will be will make inspiration to many such researchers and i'm sure there will be a ripple effect in the system therefore my humble request to every educator is uh, we need to be researching teachers and teaching researchers and we need to carry out our research within our small span and sphere of our classroom and let our success story is voiced out through digital media now we are very lucky that we have the social medias and i'm sure that will make a ripple effect in the system thank you yeah and uh, somewhat connected to the same aspect that you you have just reflected upon that success stories can be one good means of spreading the ways the teachings and the learnings that we come across and similar to it is how do we ensure that such learning becomes a priority everywhere <laughs> see that uh, i i also must tell you the national education policy uh, made a significant uh, uh, statement in the policy the statement is we need to eliminate fear of examinations we need to promote the higher order thinking skills among our learners we need to promote innovation and uh, uh, creativity among our institutions and uh, we also will be coming with a graduate uh, what you call attributes you know the graduate attributes is going to be a framework coming out by ministry of education soon and the focus is not only the intellectual capacities but the intellectual capacities integrated with your human values therefore the priority that you are talking about i know the priority in terms of uh, uh, employability priority in terms of uh, the admissions into uh, good institutions and uh, my dear friend i must tell you these priorities are going to be changed in near future and our concern is the human sustainability we want to sustain now we want to live we need we need to have life so during the covid time the kind of pandemic situation everyone could understand what is more important for them is it the money is it the power is it the position is it the intellectual capacities or the skill to survive life the peace of life mental health i think uh, we are actually going in the right direction therefore the intellectual competencies are integrated with human values and that is the new paradigm which is coming up and i'm sure that fits into the 21st century and take them towards the sustainability thank you sir i think so seeing the time just now it's we are left with just 10 minutes so i take up one more question and it is from sumanta day who asks what are the characteristics of good leadership how do we recognize these qualities see that uh, 
the qualities of a leader there are several researchers talking about uh, what really leaders need to possess you know if i want to put everything into a nutshell what leaders in education need to do is the first question so what leaders in education leaders in higher education need to do as i mentioned in my presentation they basically perform three important functions one is leaders need to lead self leaders need to lead people and leaders need to lead learning organizations therefore all these three important tasks which leaders need to do in education requires different skills and competencies different characteristics so to lead your own self a leader need to need self first if the, so if the leader has to lead self there are certain set of competencies attributes which leaders need to possess they are beginning from uh, the self awareness to self regulation to self motivation and empathy and uh, social skills which are very important for leaders you know they cannot isolate themselves within their chambers but they need to be working with people so when they work with people what is important is social capital which is important the trust the love care concern empathy unless and until a leader displays these qualities while dealing with people he cannot work in teams somebody has rightly said the quality of a leader is basically determined by the quality of the followers so if you see the followers their quality their unity and their collaboration and commitment confidence and one can imagine the quality of a leader so friends uh, all the characteristics to manage your own self leading your own self leading people and leading organizations one requires host of competencies and these competencies can be better achieved and to achieve all these competencies what is most important is the individual need to have peace in mind i am coming to the theme of our conference the peace in mind and if he is peaceful to himself he can establish peace in the organizations and that peace will energize enable people to perform their tasks in most effectively and effectively and only with the performance of people the organizations can be transformed into a vibrant learning organizations thank you thank you very much sir so with this we come to end of today's webinar on this platform through which we are trying to bring keynote speakers who are distinguished and exceptionally distinguished in their disciplines and with this second day of fruitful deliberation from dr professor pushpanatham i think so there are so many responses sir in the chat box that people have been thoroughly enjoying the session it has been a great learning experience uh, engaging activity for them and with the paucity of time i have tried to 
take as many questions as possible and i think so the answers that you have given and the reflections that you have given on their concerns are also well addressed to and they are satisfied and they are conveying their thanks and gratitude and regards so th with this i once again thank all the associations and the organizations who are collaborating in this one week international webinar on leadership for global peace and education on behalf of all this organization i wish to extend a warm thank you to all the participants to all the key speakers of this six days international webinar to our director professor hemlata talesra ma'am who is very rightly at the right time have conceived such an important topic for this webinar where educationists and the students not only from the universities but the schools and the academicians from both this discipline have joined together club together and they are engaging into this activity and i think so the outcomes would be very fruitful thank you himlata talisra ma'am and now with this word of thanks we will all meet tomorrow on the same platform at 2 pm thank you very much stay healthy stay safe thank you thank you very much and uh, i congratulate uh, the organizers for creating this wonderful platform wish you all the best for other programs as well thank you thank you